96.7 FM Pasco, 102.9 FM South Tampa, 970 WFLA, all over Tampa Bay. Thank you so much for joining us on American Medicine Today. I am Kimberly Bramel Benatti alongside Ethan Euchre and world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Benatti. Now, the director of the CDC recently warned of impending doom due to a steady rise in COVID-19 cases and made an emotional plea for people to continue following mask wearing and social distancing guidelines. Joining us to discuss what we can expect in the coming months is Todd Furness, healthcare expert and author of the new book, The 60% Solution, Rethinking Healthcare. Thank you for being with us, Todd. Now, I want to get right into your book, but first, what are your thoughts on this kind of uh, warning of impending doom from the director of the CDC? Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. I, I appreciate your time. Uh, with regard to the CDC's uh, admonition, I'm a little bit skeptical. Yeah, I think we could make this argument ultimately in an infinite way, right? There will be strains of strains of strains and variations and variants and the like. And so I worry that we're not really focused on the bigger picture of risk mitigation mm -hmm. and what the picture looks like in a, you know, for lack of a better term, uh, steady state or, or normal in the future. So, for example, we have seen in many instances in many buildings these discs, if you will, these adhesive notifications on the floors of buildings or on and elevators or on elevator bank uh, call buttons. And they say social distancing six feet required. And my question is, coupled that coupled with all the plexiglass that's gone up around the world, who's going to pay for their removal? And when will it occur? I, I'm predicting, you know, kind of in a jocular sense that it'll probably happen 10 years from now. But um, I don't really see how that's what's going to catalyze the removal. And so I think we really need to be focused on the bigger picture associated with risk mitigation. What percentage of our population is really affected by these issues and how do we address that specific population? So, yeah, that, that has been a thought of mine as well, because actually I took my first flight in over a year earlier this week. And it was very strange, just obviously having to wear a mask for an entire flight and people avoiding each other and all of that. And it just got me thinking, these are steps that we've been taking to try to get back to normal. But obviously, everyone keeps referring to the new normal. And, you know, mask wearing is very commonplace in Asian countries and things like that. Do you think we're going down that path here in the U.S. where we'll always be wearing masks? I hope not. <laughs> I think there's a good there's a good chance that a percentage of our population will uh, be wearing masks for a long period of time because they've been inculcated with this idea that there's risk that's unacceptable uh, in their environment. And there's nobody who's thoughtful or reliable guide to say, we're past that point now, you can take your masks off. And I don't know when that would happen. I don't know what would catalyze a, a, a CDC leader or somebody else to say, you can take your masks off, it's safe now. Because consider that there are always going to be, there always have been and there always will be airborne viruses. And so once you understand that, that the question now becomes, okay, what is the risk profile for those airborne viruses? And what does it mean if I get one? What are the risks I might endure if I get one? What are the complications, if you will? And so if we focus on that issue, I think we're better served. If you take a look at it, the, the mortality rate is only marginally uh, greater than that of the common flu. So it, why, why do we shut down the economy in this instance? There are other airborne viruses which are problematic as well. You know, I go back to the days of SARS and, and others, and we didn't shut down the economy for that. Uh, Ebola would be another one. Now, admittedly, they didn't get as much traction, so I'm not suggesting that they're in the same kinds of deals, but I think we really got to be focused on what is the right amount of risk that we can tolerate. I think we need to understand the reason why we have this situation. Uh, everybody's trying to look for the horse, and the problem is uh, we have a different type of an animal in front of us. The Democrats, are, they have a plan, and the plan is destroy the American economy. The American economy needs to be totally destroyed so they can have a control of the population. And it's going to be masks, and it's going to be anything that they can put on the system so they can control the population. You can see there are going to be more amount of money distributed to the population. It's going to be more ideas of pain and suffering and more ideas of infections. The reality, this is a behavior of the world. It's the same thing that the, the climate type of a behavior. 
We live in a world that has viruses. Every one of us has viruses. And meanwhile, we continue playing this dumb game. We will be not only destroying the economy, but at the same time, we will be feeding the Democrats the plan that they have to continue moving this country to socialism. Well, there's another way to look at this and you know, from a more personal perspective, this, this is commonly referred to as the drama triangle, meaning that without an enemy or a villain, there can't be a savior. And if I'm not a victim, then I can't be saved. And it, we have a, something analogous here where the villain is, is the virus and the savior is the government and the victim is the individual. And so, I think that one argument is, and I think I'm playing off of your logic, Dr. Bonatti, is that the government likes to be the savior, and whereas the conservative approach is to have more people have take independent responsibility, independent responsibility, and to not be victims, then the, the more liberal elements of our political society would argue that no, in fact, the, the individual is always the victim and it has to be saved by the government. Now, now, at the end of the day, I'm just more focused on the risk issues. I'm just focused on the reality of risk for the individual and how the individual can take steps to mitigate that risk for themselves because I think the more responsibility and, and capability we can push down to the individual, the better. And how would you say they do that? Well. Take you know, take normal, logical, rational steps around uh, protection, self protection. You know, and I go back to the things that I wrote about in my book. Um, I'm humbled by Dr. Bonatti's presence on the broadcast this morning because, you know, obviously I'm not, I don't have nearly the IQ that he does or the uh, the tradition in medicine. But from a practical perspective, which is, you know, I'm looking for policy decisions and policy help and broad strokes on how to improve things. I, I get back to you. Let's let's see your your primary care physician more frequently. Let's create a longitudinal relationship between the individual patient and their primary care physician, so they have data sets by which the primary care physician can analyze and make recommendations. Let's do simple things like eat right, sleep right, and and exercise right, which are some things that oddly are not are not while they're so basic and so critical, they're not taught much in law and med school. So I go back to those things. How can you? prepare yourself. And the number one thing, you know, the, more so than anything else is the correlation between obesity and COVID uh, for the immediate issues behind, before us. Uh, the CDC reported that over 78% of all people who were hospitalized, intubated, or died from COVID uh, were clinically obese. And that's not a good situation. Wow. Unfortunately, we're out of time. We'll have to have you back to discuss in depth further your book. But for right now, thank you so much for being on the show, Todd Furness. Thank you so much for having me.